in order to distinguish between covalent or nonpolar compounds and ionic compounds, you need to first be able to identify metals and nonmetals. So metals are going to be found first and foremost in the first two columns on the periodic table. This includes lithium, um, calcium, magnesium, those first two columns on the periodic table. Those are all metals. In fact, the first column are the alkali earth metals, the second column is the alkaline earth metals, and then subsequently you have the D block of the periodic table, which is all transition metals. So everything here is a transition metal. And if you memorize the names of the groups, alkali earth metals, alkaline earth metals, and transition metals, you can easily identify that any atom present in this location is going to be what's called a metal. And it's in the name, transition metals, alkali metals, alkaline earth metals. Subsequently, you have the p-block region of the periodic table. And all of these are non-metals, at least for the purposes of our course. All of those are non-metals, and that includes the halogens, that includes the noble gases, it includes atoms like carbon, it includes atoms like silicon, etc. All of those are non-metals. So, an ionic bond or an ionic compound is going to be made up between atoms that reside as a metal and a nonmetal. A common example of this is going to be lithium fluoride. So lithium is the third atom in the periodic table. Fluoride is the first halogen, which is over here in group 17. This means we have a metal and a nonmetal forming a compound. That's always going to be ionic. Hopefully then you can also see that sodium is an alkali earth metal as it resides directly below lithium and sulfur is right around here on the periodic table. So sodium, of which you have two, and sulfur form an ionic compound. Now with CH4, or methane, you have a carbon atom, which is found right around here, and hydrogen, which is the very first atom on the periodic table. Now, I know what you're saying. Dr. Rojas, the hydrogen is in the alkali earth metal column, and that's true. And it's kind of an unfortunate distinction in the periodic table because hydrogen is not a metal. It, even though it is over here on the periodic table, sometimes you'll see periodic tables where there's a hydrogen here and a hydrogen over here. And that's meant to help you identify that hydrogen is a non-metal. So if hydrogen is a non-metal and carbon is also a non-metal, then when they form a compound, they're purely covalent. So it is not ionic. Now, Magnesium is right around here. I believe it's the 12th atom on the periodic table. Oxygen is over here. So you have a metal and a non-metal, therefore it's ionic. Titanium is right around here on the periodic table. It is a transition metal. Chlorine is over here underneath fluorine, and it is a halogen or a non-metal. Therefore, we have a metal and a non-metal forming an ionic compound. And being able to distinguish between ionic and covalent compounds are going to be really important in this course. Therefore, I would encourage you to commit to memory the different groups of the periodic table. Again, that's going to be the alkali metals, the alkaline earth metals, the transition metals, the non-metals. This far right row is going to be called the noble gases noble gases. Those include helium, xenon, argon, etc. And then the halogens, which are going to be where fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine are. Those are called halogens. And then the bottom two rows on a periodic table 
that is kind of set off to the side on a periodic table. Those are the lanthanides and the actinides. It would really be to your benefit to begin to memorize these different groups.